All right, freaks and forgets. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a brand new show. Uh, the dangers of communism and liberty is light. This is one you're not going to want to miss. And if you do miss it, you will regret it. And I don't want you to live with regret. So, not even one letter. No, not even one letter. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> sure, not even one letter. <laughs> that was the best part of that know, whole entire movie. That that's really pretty remember. much, the, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember that movie for two things no regrets and jennifer aniston Big is a black. stripper yeah. who never oh, yeah. actually gets naked yeah pg-13 sucks. strippers like what yeah. only hollywood could do that only hollywood could write a movie where a character is a stripper but she never actually gets naked my favorite my favorite ones are the ones on like csi or like television shows where it's like oh. yoga pants closed toed heels tank top dancing on a pole yeah, you're it's right. like, oh, you mean the nothing, the nowhere that exists? <laughs> you mean that place that no one goes to? Oh, that one. <laughs> it's like I imagine like a Mormon couple. It's like, why aren't people coming to our very wholesome? Why dance aren't club? people coming to our Mormon strip club? Yeah. I don't know. Hold it, stop. That's the name for a punk band. Mormon strip club. Mormon strip club. Anyone listening? That one. I funny. called it. That one's up. Oh, never mind. It's dad's. Called it. That's funny. New band name, Eagle Eye Tiger, called it. Who said, who did that? Who used to do that all the time? That was an archer, right? No, 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 no. no. It was in uh, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. When Chris Pratt was Andy. Yeah. And they'd say something weird and he'd go, new band name, called it. He goes, I called it. You can't use it. I didn't get that far in that show. I called it. You can't use it. We were called Rat Mouse, but then we changed it to Mouse Rat. Yeah. Yeah. Remember all the all the names of the very his his band. He's like back when Chris Pratt was was still playing an asshole. Ah, yeah, he was. Damn it! Ah, you just did it to yourself there, right down the time, hippie. Running down the time. Oh uh, yeah, the when butthole. he was kind of like a selfish butthole, and then they transformed his character to this lovable guy, and then he went to the gym and got cut and became an action hero. And he wasn't allowed to is, take his shirt off anymore. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. So. It, it, let me think about it. If 10 years ago you watched the first episode of Parks and Rec yeah. and that that you know douche on the couch playing Nintendo oh, with yeah. broken legs, you're yep. like, you know, that guy is going to be one of the top five action stars in America. Yeah. You're like, yeah, it, sure it, Chris is. Pratt does have like a genuinely, I really, I really, really hope that he doesn't have the Hollywood thing. Yeah, he's pretty well grounded. Because right now he he he's got like an actual genuine, wholesome, cool, freaking thing. He went from living in his van to being Star Lord. Yeah, it's it's like, like did he live in his van for real? Like he did lived, Chris Pratt. Live Chris in his van? Pratt lived in his van when he got the role on uh, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. He was living in his van. Well, that makes sense because they're like, we want a Chris. guy who looks like he's living in his van. <laughs> Who, if he wasn't living with his girlfriend, would be living in a hole in the ground? Yeah. Like, that's him. That guy. Lived in a van before he was famous. Yeah. I'm trying to see what that... Well, Kurt Cobain got an eviction notice from his apartment the day that um, Nevermind came out. No kidding. Yeah. There we go. They they recorded the album and it was getting ready to come out. And they're like, get out. You're a bum. You're a hippie. Yeah. Get out. It's like, but... A lot of the great. I'm going to be a millionaire in 12 months. Yeah. Whatever. Get out. Uh, do we do the music yet? So now we, we've been busy talking about Chris Pratt. We have been. You're like, this is the, the craziest. If you've never seen the craziest cold open, uh, we did not create the cold open. Did you guys watch, both watch the yeah. uh, the John Belushi cold yeah, open? Are we going to get to the music? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do the we're music keep, right now. Keep stemming off on another conversation. I don't know. We might. <laughs> I don't know. I'm having fun. I'm having fun right now. Yeah, no, it is. Fun. Have, have yeah. you never watched a show like? You ever watch uh, Burn Notice? Yeah. Hell yeah. Burn they're Notice they're the kings of the cold open. So Burn Notice will start, and it'll go, and they're like getting involved in the plot line. Yeah. They're like seven, eight, nine minutes in. They're like, oh, we haven't done the yeah. opening credits yeah, yet. I forgot to do that. Oh, let's. Well, quick, roll those, and then we'll come back do the show. <laughs> Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. 
We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, the the Discord channel where people go to to sow Discord. That's what they do. They go there to sow Discord. Uh I see uh somebody in our Discord channel, Mitchell Martell, posted a uh top five fastest rifle cartridges, right? Yeah. He's got all these weird bullets, projectiles, cartridges, and stuff. Jared, do you remember when those those nutballs over at Franklin Armory came up with that weird gun that with no rifling, and you had to shoot the special little mini Nerf football bullets through it? Oh yeah, that was remember a few that. Years ago, that yeah. was like uh, like shot eighteen or shot seventeen or something like that. Did those go away or did they actually? Yeah, they went away. They're about as popular as as uh, as herpes. Those are cool. <laughs> They're also going to be like, like five that. bucks a shot. <laughs> Can you imagine the making a projectile that looks like a little a vortex, a Nerf vortex football? Yeah. Like, yeah, a little. And, but it wasn't just a football. It was it had the tail fin on it and everything. Oh. Yeah, it was. It looked like everybody here knows what a, a Nerf vortex football looks like. Of course. Right? I had one. All right. good, I think. So imagine one of those only made out of copper that you shoot out of a cartridge. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, it works perfectly fine if you load it with these five dollar a shot two two three projectiles. Yeah. <laughs> well, sign me up, man. <laughs> I want to pay five hundred dollars for a hundred rounds. Don't you? Of two two three. Oh, and they're like, well, you can shoot regular rounds through it, but it doesn't stabilize the bullet, and and you can only actually hit a silhouette at fifty yards, but. If you want to have an SBR without the tax and no rifling, this is your guy, right? Here. <laughs> yeah. And then SB Tactical said, I got an idea. How about you just put a pistol brace on that thing and shoot actual ammo and have a good day and move on with your life? Sounds like a plan to me. Like, well, we could do that. Or we could pay twelve hundred dollars for a smooth bore AR. Remember when they advertised that prior to shot? No, they did. They did like this this teaser, and so us, we in the industry, we're like, okay, how are they doing this? And I remember talking to Scott, or not Scott Hall, Scott Hall, rest of his home. I was talking to Zach Hall, no relation, and I said, what's what's your guess? He said, my guess is that they just took the rifling out of the barrel. That's my guess because they weren't telling people how how it was a hundred percent you have to have some legal. history and uh, so i mean it worked everybody went to their booth and they're like hey what's up and they're like ah oh, here it is and then remember because we talked to the guy and he had the little football oh yeah. they made lapel pins out yeah. of the little the little football projectiles he had That's one on right. it and we're like cool cool story bro and, and you know that that happens a lot and it's funny that this that our um Mitchell Martell put this in there because I looked at those little projectiles and I thought, oh, little footballs, little vortex footballs. Yeah. <laughs> ah, do you guys want to get into the Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week? Sure you do. I mean, I do. If you don't, if you don't, go get coffee and come back five minutes or so. So it looks like it's it's Easter has passed. We're a, a full month past the the uh, spring equinox, right? The vernal equinox, and it looks like it's probably st stopped snowing for the most part. <laughs> Not good. Okay, so I decided uh, this weekend, this last weekend. Well, it, it's time for me to. Do what I said I was going to do. I, I I did the uh, the hardhead veterans helmet 
uh, in in white, in mission specific, Duracoat mission specific white. Uh, and I did the uh, the PX Niner Gen three in in Duracoat mission specific white. And I thought, well, it's time for me to grab the can of the. And Jared's looking around the room. He's like, where are, are those they? things in the garage? Uh, <laughs> but there are two pictures where in the garage i'll go get them uh the, okay um on the shelf where the helmets are okay you know where the helmets are on the yep. shelf outside okay. outside the room yep yep on the shelf where there are helmets you can't miss them they look like helmets so any hooser i uh, i went ahead and i grabbed uh when you get the mission specific duracoat uh, the mission specific uh, coating Dirk as actually in a relatively small can, like a four ounce can or six ounce can, something like that. Uh, but the, the, uh, remover is in a full size can. And there's a reason for that. Uh, the, the reason they do that is so that you can sh- spray it on and then wipe it off with, you know, I, I just took a blue scratch pad and went over it. Uh, you're going to want to, it's going to drip off. So you're going to want to put down like cardboard or, uh, a box or a bucket or something, some kind of thing, unless you want it all over your garage floor. <laughs> if you don't want it all over your garage floor, you know, get something to catch it. Uh, and that's what I did. I Now, when you're using products like these, you don't want to be sucking in the fumes. I went ahead and put uh, my my face mask on, my, my respirator, a full face respirator on. And I stepped out and I was standing outside of my garage um, in the driveway area uh, with the full face respirator on spraying the helmet, getting all the, getting all the, the mission specific white off and the neighbor from next door walked up and he's like, Hey, how you doing there? <laughs> like just cooking up some meth there, buddy. No, so you're uh, coating. Uh, so you're doing yeah, pretty dang well. I got a helmet in my hand and the gas mask or the, and I, so I pulled the respirator mask off and I was like, oh, how you doing, buddy? And so forth. And we're, we chit chatted. And he's like, what do you do with that helmet? And I said, I protect my noggin, man. Keeps my noggin from getting messed up. You're like, OK, so you took off the white. Congratulations, Paul. Then what happened? <laughs> then what happened? Well, what happened was uh, I looked at my helmet and I thought, hmm. You know, even though there's going to be some green around here in the West where I'm operating, uh, there's not a lot of green. If I was in Alabama, Mississippi, you know, even Texas in the summertime or whatever, I might put green on the helmet. But right now, my area of operation is mostly brown, whether it's sand brown or brown rocks or you know, brown rocks with shadows or whatever. Uh, so I decided, and I, 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 when I got the mission specific Duracoat, I got white, uh, forest green or woodland green, flat dark earth, and black, uh, and matte black. And they're all matte. The, the uh, mission specific colors are all matte colors. They're like a super flat, non reflective, not shiny. So uh, why not? You don't want to be out there shiny. Yeah, you don't want to put super shiny reflective paint on your helmet. No, generally not. Uh, so yeah, what I did, I did that. I I took the black and I just painted a few black stripes onto the helmet, and then I took the the flat dark earth. <laughs> Please don't write me letters. That's not flat dark earth. That's desert tan. Flat dark earth is actually this. Um, do you know how? All right. Everybody in the world who makes anything, whether it's guns, stocks, boots, uh, optics, you, you name it, has a an FDE version, and none of them are the same shade. <laughs> none of them are. Oh, <laughs> uh, now the Marine Corps boots, I think they actually call them Coyote Brown. I don't think they call them FDE. They call them Coyote Brown. Um. So there's all these weird brown spectrum colors right now floating. And if you don't think that that's FDE, if you think it's desert tan or whatever, I don't care. Uh, It's a shade of brown. So I I put the black on it and then I put the brown on it over that. So just a little bit of the black stripey is coming through. And then, and then 
not knowing then there isn't in then and then i decided you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put a little bit of speckle texture this is when i put on my steve lauer how do i work you know how, how do i do a little bit of magic here my little dirt coating magic so i held put the helmet out and i held it about three feet away and i i gave it real took the black and gave it real quick real quick touches so just some little dots would come out uh just some little dots um so here it is right here here's here's my hemet here's my hardhead veterans hemet um i got the uh and you can see i tried to find the px9 but i couldn't oh it's it's in a box on the on the thing and the thing but anyway uh yeah so here's the hemet it's no longer white it is now black there's still some sheen that shines through i don't think that's the i don't think that's the paint i don't know i think it might be the the original finish or maybe it's just because it's round and made out of kevlar or whatever so uh i did that and then no one then and then i decided uh to take my chris vector and the chris vector is is like black and i did the duracoat black you guys have seen it and i did like the digital blue and the black and stuff but when you're out here in the in the brown desertish, the black and there's a lot of surface area on a chris you know uh and it's all black and i was like eh. i don't have that's the great thing about the mission specific is if i don't fall in love with it it's okay i can just take it off it'll be fine so i did the same thing with the with the chris I just I took all the important stuff off and I taped it up and I and uh, put the the flat dark earth on it and yeah there's the original black is showing through but I don't care because that's how I want it to be so uh, I did that and it worked just fine um, the all you have to do is take the mission specific remover you know when you're done when you're like okay I'm all done with winter or I'm all done with summer or whatever and and wipe it all down and start let it dry and start over again so uh, i told you guys i was going to do that and i did that and so that's done oh and the one thing if you guys haven't checked it out yet lately how many cold war veterans are in the audience you know you raise your hand like, remember when you got your your pasket your kevlar pasket helmet and the thing that supported it on your noggin was a a mesh 550 cord liner and it sat on your head and left lines and and it would give you a screaming headache after about an hour or so of wearing it you guys remember that and then you remember like well screw this crap so you rolled up rags and you took your do rag or uh, and stuck it in your helmet or maybe you went into an uh, a, a crate of rockets you know how rockets are packed in jared you know how rockets are packed oh, yeah, in foam that gray that gray foam to keep them from rattling around so you went into a, a case a rocket case and you cut the gray foam out and you put it in your helmet you don't have to do that anymore that's the crazy thing about the world in which we live you don't have to do that anymore um we are so far from a comfort level away from where we used to be uh well i bought the thing that i purchased I went to, to US CAV and I bought a donut. They called it a helmet donut. It had a hole in the top, so your hair would, head would breathe a little bit. And it was about a half inch, maybe three quarters inch. And it, you push it up in your Kevlar helmet. And, was, and I was like, oh, so much better. Because back then, the, the comfort of the troops, sons, I'm gonna tell you, was the bottom of the priority list for for the the structure you're like the the your drill instructors and your sergeants are like oh is your helmet not comfortable well, i'm sorry let me see what i can do to make your helmet more comfortable well the guys at hardhead veterans have come up with this new crazy gucci um what do they call it is it lattice, lattice. yeah so it's this lattice padding Oh, uh, so and it it replaces the standard. So first of all, I think the padding in modern helmets is pretty good. They're like, no, it could be better. We could make it better. 
So they've got this new Velcro install lattice padding. Uh, it's, it's kind of a cool thing. We're going to try one out and I don't have mine yet, Josh, but when we do, uh, I will try it out and I'll report back to you guys and let you know. How does that sound? Sound like a deal? Sound like a deal. Okay. Uh, and if you'd like to Duracoat like a pro, obviously you want to go to soonerthegun.com slash Duracoat and, uh, you will be able to Duracoat like a pro because you will go through Duracoat University. And you'll be a happy camper. All right, let's uh, pop on over to SOTG giveaway.com. And you now have 11 days, 14 hours, 9 minutes, and 40 seconds, 39 seconds, 38 seconds to sign up for the SDS Imports giveaway. And that is a, uh, a TSOS 1911 U.S. Army, only this one's chambered in nine mic mic. So, and it has an extra round in the magazine. Uh, I think it's an eight plus one. Don't quote me on that. Because, you know, standard GI, they're like, no, nah, 1911s are eight round magazines. Not when, they, not when John Moses invented it, they weren't. It was seven. Yes. And uh, if you get a traditional GI U.S. Army, it comes with seven-round magazines, right? Because that's the way it was. But uh, this one, you get more rounds, a couple more rounds of 9mm, uh, and it'll be less expensive to shoot. And generally, 9mm 1911s are generally just pretty fun. They're just fun to shoot. You know? And this one looks like a G.I. Joe version, so you guys want to get in on that. Go to SOTGGiveaway.com. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. What is going on over with our boys at highpointfirearms.com? I'm not sure. Nothing really new. Same stuff. They're going to be showing off their Yeet Cannon at the NRA show at the end of May in Houston, Texas, Tejas. So if you want to jump over there and do that, you can do that. If you want to check it out, you can check it out. Uh, speaking of our boys at A, SDS Imports, the NRA Annual Meeting, and Night Fission, our boys at Night Fission, the ones that, that produce the Student of the Gun Accurate sites, often imitated, but never duplicated. See, that, that's me. I, I'm that guy. We are the, I'm the often imitated, but never duplicated. I thought that was so, the genie from Aladdin. <laughs> you know he stole that i'm aware that that was a pop culture okay. reference of the time yeah so uh if you go to if you're planning on going to the nra annual meeting in houston at the end of may make sure that you go to the sds imports booth and while you're there sign up i'm not sure how they're going to do it, if they're going to give if they give tickets or something but they're giving away a, a px9 generation three pistol but this is a one of a kind it's a one of a kind with uh, a stainless steel slide and they've got the student of the gun night vision sights installed on it the accurate sights are going to be installed on that gun uh, i'm not sure if dave's given away a mini red dot with that or not i, I think he was going to reach out and see you I think he was going exactly to try. Going on. I think he was going to try. He said he was he was talking, and also they are in negotiations with our boys at Crossbreed. Oh, nice to uh, to give away a holster set with that Sweet. too. I know that because I was cc'd on the emails. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So if that's that's my advice to you, if you're going to be at the NRA annual meeting, make sure absolutely sure that you go over to the SDS Imports booth and check out that pistol. And if you want to see a video about how it works. Zach, did we do a video about how it works? We did indeed do a video about how that works. I'll drop that in the show notes. Yes, we. I released both an article and an accompanying video of the SDS, the PX9 Generation 3 torture test, and what I did and why I did it and what happened. So there you go. All right, time for me to be quiet and you to listen. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called seven training tips that could save your life. 
get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. I see uh, CCI Blazer Ammunition is now in stock and on sale at uh, brownholes.com. They have 9mm Luger, 40 Smith & Wesson, and 45 ACP. You know who I feel kind of bad for, Jared? Who? People, um, firearms manufacturers that are still trying to sell 40s. Oh. They're like, for real? <laughs> Uh, that's like trying to sell a car that has an A-Track player in it. And you're like, it's got an A-Track player. It's A-Track stereo with AM, FM, A-Track. Like, yeah, there no, are people out there that would buy those just because it had the A-Track. Just because, player. yeah. I'm thinking, you I'm know, if to I... a car that has a record player in it. <laughs> Do you know they made those? Did they really? Of course they, they did. They actually did. I didn't know that. There, it, there, was a, there was a brand of car. I can't remember who it was, but they had a, a like mini a turntable. And you could put 45s on it. Oh, dude, that would be, I would buy that just for that feature. Yeah. I, I don't know how well that works. I, I bet it didn't work very well because every time you hit a pothole, your music would turn off. You think? Like drive really slowly. No, that was for the car shows. That's right, for just sitting there. You're not supposed to use it when it's driving. You just yeah. Park. Just park at the car. If you show. want to listen to music, uh, park. Uh, you know, Chew to be honest, back in those days, that actually was viable. It's like you go to the freaking whatever. You park, you put on a record, you hang out with your friends. That's it. You go to the burger joint. It's still you, viable. You go to Arnold's drive through and you pull up and you. 1956. Put the, put the needle on the record. Put the needle on the record. Let's see if I can find the, the car that actually, the, the <laughs> company that made this. Uh, but that, I didn't want to talk about that today. I did not want to talk about the 40 Smith & Wesson. Now, don't get me wrong. Chrysler. Ball points bumper. Oh, did we do the bumper? No, we did not do the bumper yet. That's why. We oh, do talking. the bumper. Real okay, quick, cool. Chrysler was the one that did it, and now Brownells bullet points. Check out the big brain. You know, I could have won money on a bet like that. that there that's people, a Jeopardy people, question. Or there like, people no, are like, uh, no way. There's no way in the world they put a record player in a car. Yeah, I'll take... Uh, Who wants to be a millionaire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll take... You don't know what you're talking about for eighteen hundred dollars, Alex. Oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. No, actually, what I wanted to talk about today was optics. Optics. Oh, we didn't. Well, it's been since the summer. Oh, last summer I wrote an article about the six millimeter Creedmoor, not six point five. But the six millimeter Creedmoor rifle uh, that is a PRC gun that was built by our friend Ben. And uh, why am I typing in barrel? <laughs> we put a Brownells optic on that gun. And I was really impressed with it. And the sad thing, it's not, well, it's not sad, it's good for Brownells. I purchased a scope. I purchased a rifle scope that was advertised as a long range precision scope from another company that wasn't Brownells. Okay. Did that, put it on a rifle, started doping out. I dialed out to four, five, six, seven hundred 700 yards, dialed to 800, got it, tried to dial to 1,000. I ran out of turret. Mm. So I raised my hand. I was like, squeeze me. How do you sell a scope that is a long range precision and I can't dial to a thousand? Long range on the East Coast. Yeah, it's like, what's long range to you? 500 yards is long range. Uh, yeah, if, if you live in Massachusetts, it is. But if you live out here, 500 is median. Oh, uh, so that I had that, and then I had the new Brownell scope. The MRO. MPO. 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 The Brownells. Precision optics, yeah. Yeah. And I dialed that some gun. 
to fourteen hundred. And I think they have a couple new newer versions of the MPO since. Yeah, actually, they do. Since since the one that we we tried out, uh, they actually have newer versions. Uh, they're not that expensive compared to no, it's for the what you get. Yeah, for what you get compared to uh, you know some of the other the, the NF brand or the L brand or the USO brand or whatever, uh, a, a good scope that that will dial out to a thousand. You know what. 1400 whatever generally you can't dial to a mile i don't i have not unless you get a really weird crazy um what was the one that Schmitt, set up Schmitt bender i bet you could do the um a, a mile target mm, i don't know i don't think so i don't know but super and, high-end optics and most people are like what uh, but if you can dial to 1400 that's pretty darn good that's pretty dark. If you can dial to a thousand, that's good. It's very good. Uh, Fourteen hundred, really good. Most, I, I don't know. Some people, somebody's squirming in their seat, like, "Oh, this this scope right here will dial to a mile. How much does it cost? Thirty five hundred. Oh, okay. <laughs> the uh, the the thirteen by eighteen fifty millimeter objective lens MPO uh, is nine hundred ninety nine dollars. It has external knobs, uh, external, um, obviously. Uh, it, it has, it's a mil radian uh, click value. Uh, each click is 0.1 mil radian. Uh, and it, it's, it, I was actually impressed. Uh, I was very impressed. And not only with the rifle, but with the optic. The optic and the rifle together in the cartridge uh, was a 1,400, it's a 1,400-yard 1400 gun. Uh, if you've never... This is this is my shameless plug. Can I be shameless? Yes. You, some we got people east of the Mississippi River, right? And they're like, I've never shot beyond two hundred yards, much less three, four, five thousand. But I sure would like to. You would. Are you in the grad program? No. If you were in the grad program, there would be an email in your inbox right now, inviting you to come to the precision rifle class at the end of August, no, the beginning of August of this year. And because you're in the grad program, you would get a significant discount for that class. Oh, so people are like, you mean I could, I could have done that? I could have had a V8? Yeah, you could have had a V8. Now you still can. We're not gonna stop you from joining the grad program. Zach, we have sold not all but a portion of the seats is that correct we do indeed have still we do indeed still have seats available that is correct yes yes but there are only 10 seats total total for this class uh in case you guys don't know i'll give you the real quick rundown boom 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 when we do a class out here in wyoming it's an all-inclusive you come here you stay at the lodge it's a mountain lodge on the ranch you stay there we feed you we, we you, you use the range that's on the ranch uh, the range goes out to a mile. We have a mile long target out there. It's, we got a 1.5 miles, but you're not bringing a rifle. They don't go to one. Well, maybe some of challenge you accepted. Yeah, challenge accepted. Um, we we've got a yeah. There are actually targets out to 1.5 miles, but uh, generally people stay on the thousand yard targets or the 1400 yard targets. And if you don't, you don't have to do that. You can do the ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six, sevens, all that good stuff. It's a once in a lifetime experience, and it's an experience that you're not going to get. Uh, there are very few facilities that offer all of that, that let you stay there on the facility in a lodge, have a celebrity chef cooking you breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, you just get up in the morning, eat your breakfast, drive over to the range, shoot all day like a free human being, like without permission from the government or anybody. Uh, then you come back and you eat a delicious dinner. You have a campfire. You smoke cigars on the porch. You have adult beverages. You bond with your fellow students of the gun. I, I don't know. We should probably double the price, but we're not going to. <laughs> we're not going to double the price. A but celebrity it, it's, chef, by the way, who you can order her cookbook on shopsotg.com. Yes. A published author. A published author. Excuse me. I have a yay for doubling the price. 
Huh? I vote yay for doubling the price. <laughs> exactly. Right. So you better get in now because Jared wants us to double the price. But uh, yeah, it's an, a once in a lifetime experience, especially if you are on the East Coast uh, or even the West Coast. I don't know how many thousand yard ranges there are in the state of in the People's Republic of California. Are they allowed to have rifles there? Yes. They only put one round in them at a time. I don't know. Mm. But anyway, well, also, if you're from California, come out, bring a rifle, bring a rifle uh, and you can load one round at a time. Uh, what else? And if you live in free America, we highly encourage you and appreciate it when you show up with a gun muffler. We are gun muffler friendly. So if you've got one, don't leave it in the safe at home. Bring it with you uh, and put it on your gun. All right. So that is Brownells bullet points. Check out the Brownells exclusive optics. Uh, if you go to their website and and you you can do it a couple of ways. You can either type in optics or you can go to Brownells exclusive products or Brownells branded products. Uh, and it'll take you there where you need to go. How's that sound? Sound good? Sounds good. All right. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. I think that's a great idea. I think people should do that because Zach puts a lot of work into that. And if you don't check it out, I put so much effort into it. Same shame on you. Shame. Shame. On you. shame. Shame. Ring the bell. Shame. All right. Student of the gun homeroom brought to you by crossbreed holsters at crossbreedholsters.com. If, and when let's just, that's not say if let's say when you go to crossbreedholsters.com and you decide to make a purchase of one of their high quality products, use the promotional code SOTG that does two things. A, it saves you money, and B, it lets them know that you guys are actually freaking listening, which is a good thing. You know, if you're gonna ever, if you interact with any of our sponsors, it's always a good idea to say, hey, that bearded freak Paul Markle told me to come and see you guys. You don't have to put it that way. Uh, or if you go to, to Grinnell, Iowa, you get off the exit there uh, and you visit the pro shop the huge monstrous gigantic brownells public open open to the public pro shop if you walk up to the front desk and say hi student of the gun sent me can i have a complimentary cup of coffee the wonderful woman behind the counter will smile at you maybe laugh a little bit and say sure hang on a second <laughs> and then she'll go get roy and she'll say Tell that idiot on the radio to stop giving away free coffee. That's funny. <laughs> no, they would never do that. They would never do that. They would never do that. And because when I go there, I'm like, that's ah, okay. I, I know where it is. I'll just go get it myself. I know, I know where the coffee is. I'll go get it myself. All right. All right. So crossbreed holsters, dangerous on demand. Bum, 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 bum. Boom, 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 boom. Zach picked this topic out. Did you know that, Jerry? Did you know Zach picked this topic out? Oh, no, I did not. Yeah, I'm so smart. Plus, it's topical, so hey. Yes. So, uh, this actually has a lot to do with everything. Shanghai COVID siege. You got it open there, Jerry? Do you have the... Yeah, food shortages, talking robots, and starving animals. Yes. Yes, indeed. What is this thing that's hovering over? Dude. If, if can you imagine what would happen in the United States of America? Well, in free America, not where slaves live in America. But uh, if the government sent out one of these little robot things with a bullhorn to yell at you and tell you to get inside, uh, <laughs> it would, <laughs> like I wonder how far it would get. Be like, oh snap! Avoid gathering in crowds. Prevent epidemics. Uh, I thought you. if you. Yeah. Jared, do you want to talk into the microphone? Yeah. There you go. I'm not an idiot. Okay. So well, thanks for treating me like one. Jared, what is the story? We could barely hear you, Jared. April 15th, 2022. 
For weeks, China's pop- most populous city, Shanghai, has been under strict lockdown orders in, a, in an effort to control a co- coronavirus outbreak. outbreak. And I, can't, I gotta drink some water. Drink some water. It's 25 million residents have been trapped at home, struggling to feed themselves or get medical help for sick family members. Others have been corralled into makeshift quarantine centers and temporary hospitals, unsure of when they will be allowed to leave. Lee, you can pick up with Lee Moyne. Lee Moyne, 34, was among those restricted to their homes. She lives with her parents, both in their 70s, in the Patuo dis- district of Shanghai. Are you sure it's not Punto? Punto. Different language. <laughs> Where she has been confined since March 27th, working as part time translator and trying to secure enough groceries for their household. For Lee, who grew up in Shanghai, seeing the once bustling financial hub, which residents previously believed was a model for balancing COVID prevention measures with normal life, turn into a ghost town has been unsettling you think oh wow yeah there's there's a picture of the roadways there and there's nobody there, there's there's a little it looks like uh you see the chai cop with his, his little hazmat suit and his little bicycle oh no it looks like the dfw um roadway but there's nobody on it <sighs> talking over text and video calls with her boyfriend under lockdown elsewhere in the city lee has spent hours debating whether such drastic measures are necessary you think especially when the majority of shanghai's cases are patients without severe symptoms wow lee's boyfriend who is from wuhan where COVID was first detected and 11 million people experienced an unprecedented 77 76 day lockdown argued in favor of the swift and harsh lockdowns Really? Her boyfriend argued in favor of it because he's a mind slave. Yeah. All right. You know, you, you know which variant they're they're freaking about? I don't know. The Omicron. I thought this was a different one. No, this is the this the Omicron variant. Because I thought that they'd been in lockdown since January, since mid January, because I remember seeing stories about that there. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't really it wasn't seeing stories. It was information from a friend of mine who has family in china oh. the prospect of a long lockdown has started to take a toll take an emotional toll one video shared widely uh shows residents of a large apartment compound in patuo screaming from their balconies in the video a bystander can be heard saying that whole building is screaming what's the root problem people don't know how long the situation will last you know, people have been killing themselves like crazy uh been throwing themselves off balconies ladies and gentlemen you're like well, how does this have anything to do with J- zach how does this have anything to do with being dangerous on demand and you know our our cross holsters student to the gun homeroom because if the chinese citizens were dangerous on demand then they probably wouldn't be going through this right now well yeah but guns are bad and only the government should be allowed to have them Yes, and that's why they're all locked in their apartments, killing themselves over the common cold. Over the flu. Yeah. Now, this goes back to you guys. We need to talk about this. It's what what it was, April of 2022 right now. There have been so many doctors who have come out and said, you know, that the biggest problem with this Wuhan thing is the, the Wuhan flu is that the CDC and all the experts refuse to treat it. We know that you can treat it, that you can treat the Wuhan flu with monoclonal antibodies and ivermectin. We know that you can do that. We also know that it gets into your nasal passages and that's where it hangs out and that's how you get infected. Uh, and that you can actually do nasal, you can do a, uh, a really inexpensive, how much is, is a bottle of uh, betadine? Not betadine. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right, Jared? I do. The the um, betadine solution. You can do a nasal rinse. That's one of the things that uh, wasn't. It wasn't Malone. It was the other guy. Yeah, I don't think there's been studies done on that though. Uh, I don't know about studies, um, but yeah, he, there, there have been no double was, blind studies that I've seen on that. Okay. Oh, uh, but 
I know that he, well, he when he talked about it, he said that that it was it was either India or Indonesia where the government told people to do that. They're like, this is what you need to do. If you go out in public and you've been out around other people, when you get home, do that. Uh, and they had a drum and well, in India, they were given out ivermectin at like a nickel. A, it was like a nickel a dose. Yeah. It was super. And and they were able to get theirs under control and bring it down. Like Basically crazy. at cost. Yeah. At cost. Yeah. Like a nickel a dose. So the question we need to ask ourselves is why isn't why isn't China, who is the originator of this virus, instead of locking their people down like prisoners and slaves, why aren't they giving them treatment? Why, why isn't China, why aren't they making, producing, they've had two years, like 800 billion doses of ivermectin in a nickel a shot. Why aren't they doing that? Why aren't they using the monoclonal antibodies? Why aren't they doing that? They're not expensive. Why? Because that's not how totalitarians behave. This whole Wuhan thing, if you don't, if you still have people in your life that think that the, that the Kung flu is all about the react, the government reaction to the Kung flu is all about safety and health and keeping people safe. You'll never reach that person. Because there's there's so much evidence there out there right now to disprove that that they won't accept it. They are mind slaves. You're probably never going to reach them. But at some point in time, enough people need to stand up and say, "No, no more lies. Not going to listen to it. We could have treated this. We could when they were diagnosing people with the vid and then and not giving them any treatment at all and just saying, "Go home." And if you feel if you get worse, come back, we'll put you in the hospital where you'll die. Instead of, oh, you're you're positive here, let's give you early treatment. And get you healthy. No, just go home. We had and he knows who he is. We had one of our our listeners who was in cancer treatment and got diagnosed positive with the vid. And they're like, "Eh, just go home, sleep it off. You're not going to give me treatment or anything? Like, nope. Just go home, sleep it off. But if in two weeks you're not better, we'll put you on a ventilator and then you can die. And what nobody wants to talk about is by the time people get on ventilators, they're so bad that they, they freaking die. Ventilators don't. I want to know how many of you guys think the ventilators pull you out of it. No, we know this. When you've got it, when you have a government that says, well, you're you're not allowed to go to to church, but you can go to liquor store. You're not allowed to you can't go to church for Easter. Remember the whole Easter Sunday thing, Jared, where they sent the cops out to to uh, record the license plates in Kentucky. And then they were going to contact everyone and let them know they were in violation. So, but if I was going to the dope dispensary in, in Colorado, that would be okay. Because the dope dispensary is essential, but your church is not. The coffee shop that you love is non-essential, but Target is. It's all bull crap. It's always has been bull crap. And at this point in time, if you don't understand the dangers of communism and totalitarianism, and that they're using this as a way to control their people. Do you guys really think the Chinese government cares if the peasants jump off the buildings and kill themselves? I'm sure that Winnie the Pooh is crying himself to sleep at night over all the suicides in Shanghai. No, no, no. I- I'm sure that they're really upset about it because that is destruction of government property. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe they'll find them. They'll close their, their, their social credit accounts. Uh, the other thing that you guys need to understand that's been going on in china uh, and they've been doing this for over a year now maybe two years is they'll they go into these factories and they force nasal swab people and if they come up with one positive they shut the whole factory down for two weeks no production nothing in or out you say well it's their country who cares where's everything in the world made there so if you're an american company 
And, and uh, I just talked to someone yesterday who said, there's a microchip shortage. Did you know that, Jared? It's been yeah. like that for a while. Yeah, there's a microchip shortage. Can't get them. Why? Because they're made in, in China. Well, what's up with the factory? Make some more chips. No, actually, uh, Xi Jinping over there got the, the, the sniffles. So we shut the factory down. Nothing's going in or out. We shut the port down. No boats are leaving and going to California. Uh, yeah, but what if I'm a company in the United States that's reliant upon those products to finish my products, to sell them so I can make money and pay the rent and not go bankrupt? And Xi Jinping, Winnie the Pooh says, guess what? It sucks to be you. I guess it's a life lesson. You don't get your products. You don't get to finish making whatever it is you need to make. The bank shows up and says, where's our money? You say, I don't have it. All my microchips are in China. And I can't finish these cars, trucks, whatever, until I get them. And the bank says, we don't care. And they say, F you, pay me. But I can't pay you. And they're like, well, okay, we're going to bring, we're going to show up with the sheriff and we're going to auction off your property. Kids. The way it was put to me by a close friend of mine, he said, he is the, the China Wu flu shutdowns are a trade embargo without calling it a trade embargo. It's a way for Winnie the Pooh to shut us off and crush our businesses without officially shutting us off. Like, oh, no, it's not about that. It's about safety and health and, and making people, making sure people are healthy. Really? Is that what it's about? How healthy are people who are, tra who are, are put under house arrest in a 500-square-foot apartment and that are killing, the, eating their freaking house pets so they don't starve to death? Those people are really healthy, huh? Oh, man. And you know what's crazy, Jared? I'm going to tell you what's crazy. The fact is that we've been dealing with the realities and the horrors of communism for 100 years on planet Earth, and we still have people that aren't fed up enough with it to end it. You'd think. This would be a great time for the people of Shanghai to rebel, but they can't. Because the government controls 100% of their money. How does the government do that, Jared? The government, how does the government control their money? It's a good question. It's a good question. Topic for another day. Yeah. All right. So you can either uh, be a, an American, a, a piece of human filth, and embrace communism and, and uh, apologize for communism. And socialism is just communism in a new dress and lipstick. Okay. Uh, I said it. I meant it. I'm here to represent it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a section that we call Liberty is Light. This is a kind of a best of. This is a prereq. This is one of those things that you need to listen to and understand it if you're going to be a dedicated student of the gun follower and listener. So uh, that's going to happen in three two and uh, be safe out there on the roads if you're on your treadmill get ready to sweat and i hope that you took your nine millimeter uh, swat fuel before you got on that treadmill so you can burn off those extra calories and get fit for the new year i am your host professor paul markle and we are back for yet again another episode of student of the gun radio and on the other side of the glass case of motion looking He's got a look of anticipation on his face, folks. He's, he looks like he's excited, like he's got something he wants to say. Well, I'm just I'm excited about the what what he's going to talk about because he said he's going to blow my mind, and he didn't tell me what he was going to talk about. Uh, so I'm anxiously waiting over here. Yeah, the uh, the main topic of this episode I actually came up with this morning, Jared. I was sitting this morning, having my first cup of coffee, and I, you know what I was reading? You know, your mom bought me for my birthday. Uh, the Duck Dynasty or the uh, yeah the Duck Dynasty Daily Devotional. That's a lot of D's in in one sentence. But uh, I was reading the uh, the Daily there, and it's the topic didn't really 
deal with this specifically, but it gave me kind of an inspiration. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of uh, a little bit of Professor Paul here coming up. But before we get into that, we need to take care of some well, some you know basic housekeeping and what have you. We had an armed living class yesterday here at Student of the Gun University. Fantastic class, a lot of really good students. We had people. Not from not only from our home state of Mississippi, but we had people from Louisiana, from Illinois, and Texas as well. So we had four states represented uh, in the class. We had males and females, and uh, one of one of our listeners out there uh, is a husband who did the exact correct thing. And what is that, Jared? What is the exact correct thing if you're a husband who has a wife that's thinking about getting into shooting? To taking taking your wife to a class or sending your wife to a class. That's don't right. don't try to teach her yourself because she probably won't listen. That's right. She's not going to listen to you. I'm sorry. I hate to break your heart. You're like, but but I'm a really smart guy, Paul. I've been shooting my whole life ever since I was born, and my wife should listen to me. How's that working out for you? Probably not too well. Yeah, if you've got a wife who's interested in shooting or who wants to conceal carry or you know, doesn't understand why you think you need so many guns and holsters and accessories, rather than try and convince her yourself, just buck up and send her to a class. Either you know, dig your wallet out of your back pocket and sign her up for a class, pay for the class, and let her go. And <laughs> you know what I said to, to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Russ yesterday? I walked up. We were, they were online. I was lining people up, and I said, you guys have the same last name, right? And he says, yeah, we need to be separated, huh? I said, yep, you need to go to the other side of the line. <laughs> That's funny that he knew. Yeah, he uh, he did the right thing bringing his wife to absolutely, another class. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, and we got a little note this morning that says uh, Mrs. Russ is very excited about shooting and wants to go do it even more now. Good. So she had a good time. So That's what happens. That's that's right. That's what happens. It's Bring your wife to Student of the Gun University, and she'll and want to go. She'll she, want to keep. Shooting. She'll want you to buy more guns. How's that? There we, we go. We will. There's a deal. You want to make that deal with them? You bring your wife to Student of the Gun University, and we will convince her that you need to buy more guns and ammunition, and holsters and accessories. How's that sound? <laughs> Guys are signing up right now. <laughs> Guys are online. They're like, when's the next class? Oh, all right. Uh, but oh, speaking of that, speaking of next class, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're changing the way we uh, open up class registration because we have so much interest in the classes. We're only going to open up registration for a week at a time. So when the next class that we do, we're going to do, we're going to open it up for a week, and that way we're going to get the uh, the core group of students that actually want to be there, the people that sign up first or who's going to be there. And also, Jared, uh, you might want to let them know that, uh, well, if you haven't taken the time to sign up for the uh, the e-blast, the, the weekly notification newsletter that you get, the, the, the free one that goes out to everybody, if you haven't taken the time to do that yet, shame on you because it's free. It costs you nothing. And that is how Jared is going to be letting everybody know what's going on. And if, if you're interested in training specifically, go to SOTGU.com and sign up for that a specific newsletter because that's who's going to get the training stuff first first okay all right rock on so you're like but man i'm gonna have to really like pay attention well yeah you are i know it breaks your heart but if you're going to pay attention to something it should be student of the gun should it not it should be yeah you need to stop yawning over there freak we got three hours of radio to record. All right, Jared, over there on the other side, are we ready to uh, move into our monologue? You got anything to say? You're over there. You're fidgeting. What are you doing? Yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, the mind blowing part of the episode. I'm ready to have my mind blown. Yeah, okay. I see you uh, have taken a seat and you're you're relaxing there. Well, all right. You guys know. You should know, even if you went to public school, what is the definition? Jared, I'm going to ask you this because I've asked you it before, but I want to. What is the definition of darkness? The lack of light. The absence of light. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we create light. Light is energy. Light is a result of energy, of positive energy. 
Darkness is not a result of positive energy. Darkness is the result of a lack of light. Correct? Right. We don't make darkness. We don't create darkness. There's no light out there that makes darkness, or there's no, no handheld device that you flick a switch and it makes darkness. Uh, now, you can have artificial darkness with smoke or fog or what have you, but darkness is simply the absence of light. And light doesn't just happen on its own. Light is a result of positive energy. Liberty, human liberty, is much like light. Liberty does not just happen as a default. Many people in the United States of America believe or act or, or go out about their daily business ignoring liberty or assuming that liberty will just occur all on its own, that it will happen all on its own, and it doesn't. Liberty is actually a product of energy, of positive energy. The only way that you can have liberty for yourself, and when I say liberty, I don't necessarily just mean freedom. When I say liberty, what I'm saying is that it's not just going to happen all on its own. It's going to happen as a product of energy, of deliberation. People who in the United States believe that just because I am an American citizen, just because I was born here, I'm guaranteed liberty. I'm guaranteed freedom. They're making a mistake. They assume that, ju that it's just going to happen on its own. And, and it's not. It's not going to happen. If you sit there and think, well, just because I'm an American, just because I was born here, just because we have a constitution, just because the founding fathers did what they did, then I'm guaranteed liberty. You're wrong. You're incorrect. And the reason I feel so strongly about this is because a lot of people on our side, in the gun world, in the gun community, a lot of those people don't seem to get it. They don't seem to get that it's not just about guns. It's not just about owning guns or having guns or playing with guns or hunting or three-gunning or whatever. Guns are a part of liberty. Firearms are a part of liberty. When you deprive someone the right to possess arms, and whether it's a spear or a bow or a sword or a lance or a firearm, when you deny them arms, you are denying them liberty. When you have a lack of liberty, if you don't have the positive energy that it takes to put forth to ensure liberty, well, what do you end up with? Well, what is darkness? Darkness is a default. It is an absence of light. And slavery or servitude is that same thing. It is a default of the absence of liberty. If you don't participate in your own liberty, if you don't participate in the preservation of liberty in the United States of America, then what you end up with is a default, is a default and that would be slavery and servitude. It doesn't just happen all on its own. You actually have to be an active participant. And unfortunately, I, I just don't see that today. I don't see it as much as I, I believe we should see it. We have people that are uh, on our side, ostensibly. And they think that we need to be more reasonable and that we need to give a little more and a little more and a little more to get along. And they don't understand why people like myself and others are so hard-headed and so extreme that we're not willing to just give up a little bit. Well, when you give up a little bit, when you give up a little, little here, a little there, a little there, what do you end up with? Well, you end up defaulting to the level of servitude, to a level of slavery. Maybe not slavery with physical chains, but definitely slavery nonetheless. And
and it it saddens me. I'm not trying to bring you guys down, but it saddens me that that people that should know better feel like their only participation is voting once every two years or once every four years. And then they, they do that, and then they're done. They're all done paying attention. They're all done with their citizenship duties. They're all done being concerned. And they just assume that because they are an American citizen that they're always going to have liberty, that the United States of America is always going to stand for, quote, unquote, freedom and liberty. Now, with liberty comes responsibility, comes the responsibility for your choices, whether they're good or bad, whether you succeed or whether you fail. Liberty is not a guarantee of success. Many people think that because they've been granted liberty by the founding fathers, by the founding documents, by the fact that they were born in the United States of America, they're the recipients of liberty and that that guarantees them success, that guarantees them comfort, that guarantees them what they want out of life just because. That's not liberty. Liberty is responsibility. Liberty is duty. Yes, duty. Not just rights. Everyone likes to talk about their rights. I have the right to this. I have a right to keep and bear arms. I have a right to free speech. I have the right, the right, the right, the right. Well, with rights come responsibilities. And with responsibilities, you must understand that you have a duty as a citizen. And there are certain duties that come with that. It's not free. You don't just get it because... And until we as a nation, until we as the collective good guys, until we get together and everyone, or at least most of us, a majority of us, realize that liberty is not simply a default. It is not a state of default. Liberty is like light. Light is a product of deliberate energy, of positive energy, whereas darkness is the default it is a lack of light. And if we lose our liberty, if we don't guard it, if we don't exercise that energy that we need to exercise, then the default state is servitude. It is slavery. And that really is the only choices that we have to make. You have a choice as a listener of Student of the Gun Radio. Uh, if you're living in the United States of America, if you're not living in the United States of America and you're listening to me, uh, I'm sorry for you. Um, I hope that all things are going well where you live. Um, I believe that we understand. And folks, I, I didn't mean to, to dive into the uh, the foreign countries or the, the other nationalities, but we as Student of the Gun Radio, we get letters, messages, Facebooks, all that every week from people in other countries. We, we've read some of those to you from listeners in Australia, listeners in Great Britain, listeners uh, you know in Canada. And they'll tell and they tell us don't believe the hype, guys. It is not all unicorns and rainbows and and, and sunny days here in Australia, in England, you know, Great Britain, uh, in Canada. We don't have a second amendment. We don't have a bill of rights. We just have to do whatever we're told. They've taken away our liberties. They've stripped our liberties from us a little at a time over, you know, decades upon decades. And eventually what we have is a bunch of scared tax slaves, a bunch of fearful tax slaves who have been basically, they're, they're like a dog who's had his teeth pulled out. They can bark, but they can't bite. That's what we have in Great Britain right now. We have a bunch of, uh, of basically toothless dogs that are barking about, uh, a lack of liberty, a lack of freedom. Now they're in danger because they have mobs and thugs uh, just roaming the streets, randomly cutting off people's heads and murdering them, and they're helpless, they're defenseless to do anything about it. And that's the model that some people think that we should emulate here in the United States of America. And you say, well, that's never going to happen here. Okay, why is it never going to happen here? Because we're special. Because 200 years ago, a bunch of men got together in a room in Philadelphia and signed a piece of paper. And so that guarantees 
that it will never happen here? No, that's not why. The, they gave us the framework. They gave us the directions. But if we don't follow those directions, if we don't follow that framework, we'll lose it. It just doesn't happen all on its own. It takes positive energy. It takes absolute effort on your part to maintain liberty. Liberty is like light. It doesn't occur all by itself. You have to do something to make it happen. And I'm hoping that in the year to come that we'll take that time. That And we're, gonna, we're trying to help you guys out through what we're doing with the Patriot Fire Team through the videos that we're releasing, through the, the book that's coming up, and it's going to be released this week as you hear this. Uh, it's going to be available. We're trying to reach out and to inspire you as a listener, the, you who are out there and you're saying, well, I'm doing this and this, or I'm, I know I could be doing more, I know I should be doing more, what can I do? And that's what we're doing here. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jared. I've heard all too many times, mostly from people that are younger than me, they say something like, well, why should I be involved? Everybody else is already taking care of it. And what do you, what do you have to say to that? Why do you think they think that way? Well, it's the, uh, the I'm not responsible for anything mentality. It's the, it's the, I guess it's the, in, the great insurance mentality. Uh, don't worry about your bank being robbed. They're insured. Your money's insured. Don't worry about, you know, being anything. It, it's always someone else's responsibility to take care of you. And the state is more than happy to convince you that you shouldn't take care of yourself. It's the, you know, it's the police officer's job. It's the fire department's job. It's the state's job. It's, the, you know, it's everybody's responsibility but yours. You just go to work and be a tax slave. Don't worry about anything else. We'll take care of all that. And the only thing we ask is that you give us 100% absolute servitude. Anything we say, you have to do. And we, we've been taught that, that everything we want is our right, but we have no responsibilities and no duties. Just being born in America is enough to have to be guaranteed food and shelter and housing and free phones and free cars and free everything else for the rest of your life. And uh, we we can't we can't keep on like that. It's not going to work. Well, like for instance, uh, do you want to move on to the next story, or, or can we keep going? Well, I mean, do do you want to do the next story in this? Uh, we could save it, I guess. But let's. I was going to compare the like what happened in Detroit or in Michigan with the water thing. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, I I was talking to somebody about it, and they said. Uh, I, I don't know where they got the information, but they were basically the people were, they were, I don't even want to call it, uh, I, I can't even, I can't think of the word. It just le left my mind. It just left your mind. The whole water is a human right thing. Yeah, but no, like what what they're doing, they, were, they weren't petitioning, they were. Protesting. Yeah, protesting, there it is. I knew it started with P, but anyway, they were protesting because the local businesses were supposedly some of the ones that had the most delinquency in their water bills. Hmm. And, okay, if that's true, but my thing is the people that were protesting, why were they protesting for somebody else to take care of them instead of going? Like, if you if you didn't have water in your house, would you, be, would you make a sign and go protest, or would you go out and, and try water. to find water or try to find a job to pay for your water? What would you do? Well, let, let's face facts. Water is not expensive we get I mean, it, it, here at, at the student of the gun university building we have a water bill and we get what 10,000 gallons a month 5,000 gallons a month yeah we get 5,000 gallons a month for the base rate of 25 bucks or something like that it's a lot of freaking water folks yeah uh, there's people in in the world there's people in africa they don't see 5,000 gallons of water a year much less a month oh uh, but it's a, it's an entitlement mentality that well because I'm born here everything I want should I'm entitled to everything I want. Well, and, and another thing that I said was the businesses have their water on. They provide to the community. They provide tax dollars to the community. These people that were that were protesting 
because they didn't have water, what are they giving to the community? Well, let's face facts. Those be, they're all leeches. They're they already pro- getting they provide, free housing, they so they want free no, water too? No useful purpose in life. Um, and we, you can't survive. You know, We talked about this before. We cannot survive as a nation when we have more people taking out of the system that are putting into the system. When we have more people leeching off of the system that are actually providing a value to the system, then you, you can't survive as a you nation. You end up like California. It doesn't matter what the name of your country is. You know, we could, United States of America, you know, Swaziland, it doesn't matter if you have more people that are taking away and not non-producers producers versus non-producers that's not the way the world was ever established to be i mean let's face it you go go at, go back you know in your world history go back to the the tribes and and so forth if you didn't produce no one would accept they wouldn't accept a physically fit adult not contributing to the community it was not acceptable at all and we've gotten to that point where we have decided that in order to be fair or to be just or to be nice that some people well they just can't yes they can they just don't want to and we can't survive as a nation It's not, you know, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you want to consider it or not, whether you want to talk to talk about it, the fact of the matter is, it's like, you know, we we in in was in video two. I talked about whistling past the graveyard. It's like, well, I'm not going to talk about it because if I talk about it, then it'll happen. No, you know, if there's a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico and it's going to make landfall in five days, ignoring the fact that the hurricane is out there, the hurricane doesn't care whether you acknowledge it. It's coming. The storm doesn't care whether or not you've made the conscious decision to acknowledge it. It's still going to happen. And whether or not you acknowledge the fact that the country is in trouble, whether or not you acknowledge the fact that we're going down a a slow and steady descent into the seven levels of hell, whether or not you acknowledge that or not doesn't stop it from happening. Oh, I'm just going to put my head in my iPhone and play Candy Crush while the world crumbles around me. Oh, whether or not you acknowledge it, whether or not you, oh, it's, 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 you know, it hurts my feelings or it makes me uncomfortable. So I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to listen to people who talk about it. You know, Jared, I'm, I don't like to, I'm, it's like these, oh, we, we, we're all about guns, not politics. Folks, guns are politics. Guns are freedom. Guns are arms, and arms is liberty, and the possession of arms equals liberty, and the denial of the possession of arms equals slavery, and that's it, and it always has been through the entire history of mankind. There's always been one group that has tried to disarm another group, and after that other group is disarmed, they're subjugated. This isn't new. It's been going on for thousands upon thousands of years. And just because you went to public school in the last 20 years and didn't learn about history doesn't make it so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being out there in the audience. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a student of the gun uh, and for sharing this with other people and supporting our sponsors and all that good stuff. And this is when I say, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.